Greetings travelers, adventurers and fellow keepers of the lake. Welcome to the rules breakdown of Crown and Skull. I can say my most anticipated game of this year. Let's just uh, jump right in. Uh, no need for intros on or anything like that. So, what is Crown and Skull? Well, uh, first of all, it's a player facing game. So, what does that mean? It means that most of the time you know what the target number is. So, you would just roll without DM needing to like set the number and then ask you to roll and then break down what is happening. The other interesting thing is it's a point by system which means that all the progression in the game is done through points more on that later so you would be acquiring some points and basically expanding them to grow as a character now in terms of roles i mentioned roles right so uh in terms of roles that you as a player are going to to make there are Flat rolls. Okay, you and the guard are grappling each other. Who is gonna win? Who is stronger? We don't know. So just roll 2d20s. Who has the lower one uh, wins. And this is the good time to mention that this is a roll under system, which basically means when you have a target number, you roll uh, a d20. And if it is below that value, then you succeed. The other type of rolls are skill rolls, of course. Uh, you would have your skills. And did I mention that Crown Skull has no stats? Well, Crown Skull has no stats, so no dexterity, no strength, anything like that. When you want to achieve something, you do it through skills. When you want to evade something, you have an evade skill. If you want a strength roll, well, that's basically basically a muscle skill. You roll under the value on your character sheet and if you do so, you succeed. Uh, there are also defense rolls when are they used when you're attacked. So, uh, for example, here you see a roll uh, that the defense is 6. So if I roll a d20 and I don't know if you can see that, but this is a 12. Believe me, it's, it is a, a 12. Um, basically, I failed which means I'm hit. In Crown and Skull, there is no two hit rolls, so you would go straight to damage. So yeah, damage rolls. Uh, damage rolls, basically, you just roll damage. It is, uh, as we will see in the later videos, it is going through some math, and then you see how much damage you have dealt to the enemy. Now, this game is about making a lot of rolls and trusting the dice completely. I trust the little dice. When you want to ask a yes-no question, is there a herb that will heal me here? Or... Is the guard off to P maybe now or later? Well, ask a yes, no question with a roll. How do you do that? You roll a D6, 1, 2, 3 is yes, uh, 4, 5, 6 is no, or vice versa, however you want. Uh, am I doing this the right way? Well, uh, um, no. Yes, who could have thought? Okay, uh, so, well, these are the basic rolls, but there are a lot more things you can roll for, as in any RPG, I guess. So, only the, the sky is limit. You see, this is the sky, and, yep. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my best. Okay, off with, with this. In terms of critical success, well, it's a 1. And if you have a critical failure, you rolled 20. So, yeah, this is bound to confuse a lot of D&D players, I guess. One thing that is also very specific to this game is there is no treasure. Well, this is convenient. I found some treasure. Well, to use this, you would need to have hero points. So this is a fancy weapon. So I guess uh, three or more hero points to acquire. I will just be taking this. Basically, that's the premise. A lot of things in this game are like that. Very counterintuitive, innovative, uh, something new, something fresh. So I guess this gives you a rundown on how this is gonna go. In the next video, we will jump into character creation. And I'm not gonna do the outro that I'll usually do because that would be too long. Anyways. Farewell. <laughs>